Seekers television broadcast where Jesus is Lord. Well, we praise God for another day, for another privilege and a glorious opportunity to share with you a living word from God. And yes, I do have a word for you today. Please grab your Bibles and let's get right to work. Open them up to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13. We'll start there. As you know, we are teaching a series on kingdom concepts. We're on concept number two now. The first one was that we know that we are citizens of the kingdom. We are members of the household of God. That is so, so, so important to have knowledge of the fact, to be cognizant of the fact that we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Praise God forevermore. When we made Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives, when we, when we were washed in the precious blood of the Lamb, glory to God, the Bible says, that our names were written in the Lamb's book of life. Praise God, written with the ink of the precious blood of Jesus. It is certified in heaven, documented, that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Praise God forevermore. So our citizenship is in heaven. So our second concept was developing a kingdom mindset. That's where we're going to park the car here for the next two sessions. And we're going to trust God to unveil and unfold and reveal the truth to our spirits about the developing of the kingdom mindset. Now, let me preface this by saying this. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, and in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, Jesus, after successfully rising from the dead, please listen to me carefully, after he rose from the dead and met with his 11 disciples, he said, all power, that's the Greek word exousia, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore, or, let me say it this way, because of that, I'm commissioning you to go, glory to God, and make disciples of all nations, or the traditional King James says, teaching all nations, but if you study that out, he said, you go make disciples of nations. Somebody say disciples. Oh, yeah, Jesus, after rising from the dead, folks, he could have said anything, anything. But yet the most important words ever uttered from the Son of God's mouth after he rose from the dead was, go make disciples. Glory to God. Go preach this gospel. You get men and women saved, you get them to believe, and you get them baptized, and then you make disciples out of them. Glory to God. Folks, listen to me carefully. I've been saying this for the last several weeks on both radio and television. Jesus, the prince and head of the church, is extremely interested in strong local churches. I'm going to say it again because it's vital. It, it is so, so important when it comes to this lesson that we're studying. He wants strong local churches. He wants, he wants people to get born again and then to be nursed up in the words of faith. He doesn't want us ignorant when it comes to spiritual things. He wants us to grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That we come to a place where the Bible calls in Ephesians 4, a perfect man, a mature man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's Ephesians chapter 4. In other words, he wants us operating just like him, which is why it is vital, it is imperative, extremely important that we get under anointed teaching, that we become disciples, that we learn, but that we learn the ways and the things of God, his thoughts, his purposes, the intents of his heart, and we begin to move in the plan of God and in the ways of the kingdom. Simply put, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Are you getting this? Glory to God. Say this with me. I am a citizen of the kingdom of heaven and I am a member of the household of God. Praise God. That excites me to say that. The word household comes from the Greek word oikos. It literally means not just being a member of a family, but everything that the owner or the head of the house has. His property. Glory to God. Everything about him. Remember Jesus when he rose from the dead? The Bible says in Psalm 24 and 1, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Glory to God. So when you talk about God's household, I'm talking about everything that he had. 
We even sing songs about it. The cattle upon a thousand hills is here. In my father's house. Come go with me to my father's house. Glory to God. Whoo, I'm excited already. I'm going to preach myself happy. Glory to God. Say this with me. I will continue to develop a kingdom mindset that's so important. I will continue to do that. You never get to a place, beloved, where you are it, where the buck stops with you, where you need no more teaching. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You will ever be learning the things of God. His, his, his infinite wisdom, his ways are past finding out, but he will reveal things to us by his spirit. So we'll be ever learning new things, going to higher heights and deeper depths. Glory to God. Deep calling unto deep. God's spirit calling unto our spirit. The spirit of man is a candle of the Lord. Praise God. So we'll be ever grasping more spiritual truth, hungering. And thirsting after righteousness. Praise God forevermore. Say this with me. I will speak the word of the kingdom. Say it again. I will speak the word of the kingdom. Please say that one more time. I will speak the word of the kingdom. That's vital. Lord willing, we'll get into that next week. And lastly, it's the Father that dwells in me he does the works father in the name of jesus we thank you for this television broadcast we thank you for the now network we thank you for this medium that's being used by the great man of god pastor mark and his wife lady t burns we thank you for that wonderful ministry in easily south carolina we thank you for making this ministry flourish and grow and we're so happy to be part of this network family and we pray that you use this time of fellowship together in the word to get men and women born again, to draw men and women that are in a backsliding state back to you, to minister healing to our physical bodies. Yes, Lord, we come to hear and be healed. We want your word to be like a medicine. We want it to get down into our spirit, our souls, our joints, our marrow. Drive out sickness and disease. Drive out and kill cancer, cancerous cells. Cause blood levels and sugar levels to be normal. We command our bodies to function in the perfection in which you created the function. We believe in the supernatural power of your word. And that's why we're here. We come to hear and be healed. Hear and be delivered. Hear and be saved. Hear and get wisdom for our finances, our ministries, our children, our businesses. Our eyes are upon you. Spirit of God, unveil, unfold, reveal the truth to our spirit today. We love you and we receive correction, instruction, and reproof from the word of God today. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the Gospel of Matthew. We're going to study tonight synoptically, synoptically, meaning we're going to go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and I might even touch a little bit on John. The synoptic gospels, you look at the synonyms, uh, synoptic, S-Y-N, it simply means the same as. And so when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you study it, envision four different mountain climbers going up the same mountain, big old mountain. One man's heading up from the north, another one's heading up from the south, Another one's heading up from the east. Another one's heading up from the west. When they get to the top, they all meet and they begin to tell a story. <laughs> oh, dear God. Whoo, you should have saw the deer that I saw. Did it have a red stripe on it? Yeah, I saw that deer, except it had two other little ones with it. The other guy said, I didn't see the other two, but I definitely saw that one. And somebody else would be on the other side. Say, yeah, I did see it. And then I saw that big old buck there, too. And, and the other one said, well, I didn't see that, but I did see. See, they all came up the same mountain. I saw it from a different angle, but all of them are telling the truth, right? They're giving you a well-rounded view of that mountain. Are you following me? So when you study synoptically, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you're getting the same account. All these men experienced some of the same things with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They just saw things from a different angle. Glory to God. And when you read them all together, you get a well-rounded view of the life and ministry of Jesus. Somebody shout glory. Amen. So, let's begin in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 10 and 11. The Bible says, And the disciples, somebody say disciples. 
Say it again. Disciples. And the disciples came and said unto Jesus, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, disciples, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But unto them it is not given. Notice who it's given to. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven are unlocked to disciples. That's very, very important. Let's go to uh, verse 30, uh, 36. Same chapter. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples. Somebody say disciples. Say it again. Disciples. His disciples came unto him saying, Declare unto us this parable of the tares. See, this is what disciples do. Disciples, write this down. Disciples are very inquisitive. Oh, dear God. Disciples have an inquiring mind. They want to know. What does this mean, Lord, right? Go to the Gospel of Mark. I'm excited. I mean, I am excited about the Word of God. Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. Let's look at verse 34. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, Jesus expounded. The word expound means he explained. He gave deeper insight. He unveiled other truths about this particular parable to them that the other people didn't get. This is why it's so important to be a disciple. Only disciples get further knowledge, folks. You ever notice that? Only people that go to college get that higher level of, of learning that people that just stop at high school don't get. See, you have to want to know. You have to keep yourself under tutorage. Are you following me? And so, he expounded all things to his disciples. Somebody say disciples. Please say it again. Disciples. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke. Remember, we're studying synoptically. We're, 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 we're climbing up this mountain at different angles. We're going to get a well-rounded view of how Jesus feels about discipleship. The key to developing a kingdom mindset. Gospel of Luke chapter 6. Let's begin at verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when he it was day, he called unto him his disciples. Somebody say disciples. Would you please say it one more time? Disciples. And of them he chose 12. So a group of them came, but he chose 12 out of that group and he named them up. Apostles. Now, the apostleship, listen to me carefully, doesn't do away with discipleship. Please write that down. Apostleship, or let me say this, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, whatever God has called you to do, whatever office, that doesn't um, absolve you from the responsibility of discipleship. Please write that down. Glory to God. I'm so glad this is being video so I can go back and listen to it. This is being said under the anointing and inspiration of the Spirit of God. I did not plan on saying that. Discipleship. Discipleship is, 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 a, is a lifelong experience in the things of God and in the things of the kingdom of God and in the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. Because remember, God's wisdom his knowledge, his understanding, it's infinite, it's past finding out. You're talking about an eternal God who knows the end of a thing from the beginning, the Alpha, the Omega, the first, the last, the beginning, the end. There's nothing that he does not know. Glory to God. He's called omniscient, all-knowing. And so he has to disperse and dispense and reveal this knowledge a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Do you remember when Jesus walked the face of the earth? He told, he told his disciples, he said, there's many things I want to say to you, <laughs> but you can't bear them right now, okay? Remember when he said that? He said, how be it? When I'm gone, I'm going to send the Spirit of truth. He'll, he'll bring all this thing to remember. He'll show you things to come. He'll unveil the truth to you. Remember that? And so there's certain things that we just can't handle, you know? And so God, God has to almost spoon feed us his wisdom. Please write that down. He has to almost spoon feed us so we can grasp the things of God. And watch this. This kind of stuff is revealed to disciples. In other words, people that want to know. See? 
He that has ears to hear, or him that has, to more shall be given. But he that has not ears to hear, he that doesn't want to know, from him is going to be taken, the Bible says, that which he has. See, you have to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Glory to God. You have to want this stuff. Like the disciples, they came to Jesus. Lord, declare unto us this parable. Uh, what did you mean by that? They want to know stuff. Our disciples are hungry. You ever notice that? We're hungry. We want to know something. Glory to God. Look at verse 13. And it was day he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, and named them apostles. Verse 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain with the company of his disciples. Somebody say disciple. Now notice, after he called unto him his disciples, he chose 12 out of that, named them apostles, but when he came down, he was with a company of disciples. So the discipleship, the apostleship didn't do away with their discipleship. He still trainings. The, the very fact that it says that he had a company of them let you know Jesus had a school of disciples. He was training folk. And that brings me to our message today. Discipleship, the key to developing the kingdom mindset. Now, let me say this. Um, most of you know my testimony if you've been around any period of time. Um, you know that I came from a very hard life. I was a drug addict. I was a criminal. Been to prison about seven times. Uh, been in and out of jails, prisons, courthouses, whorehouses, uh, just whatever kind of house you can think of other than the White House. I pretty much been in it. Uh, lived in a park bench. I was homeless. I was sick in my body. I was broke. I was running from the law. I had I had a very very devastated uh, lifestyle before I came to know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. After I believed on him and received him and got born again, the thing that got me, listen carefully, in the position that I am in today, the position that I'm in today is discipleship. Listen to me very carefully to what I'm about to say. I now live in a home. I'm on radio and television seven days a week, folks, seven days a week, debt-free ministry, Owe no man anything, even all my bills at home paid. The Lord has really blessed me. Closet full of clothes, beautiful wife, uh, top man in the business where I am. All these wonderful things. No longer homeless, no longer sick and weak and broken down. Um, Jesus literally revolutionized my life. And to his name be all the glory, honor, and praise. But folks, the thing that got me there was discipleship. Nobody laid hands on me and cast out no devils. Not that anything's wrong with that. It is biblical to cast out devils and lay hands on folk. No doubt about that. Nobody anointed me with oil. Nothing wrong with that. That's in the Bible. We should anoint with oil. Praise God in the prayer of faith. So save and heal the sick. Glory to God. Nothing wrong with that. I'm saying faith in the word of God, applying the word of God putting myself under tutorage according to the gospel of John chapter 8. Let me flip over there. Jesus speaking to those Jews that believed on him. Listen what he said in verse 31 and 32. Gospel of John chapter 8. Then Jesus said to those Jews that believed on him. Let me put that in the first person. Then Jesus said to Garen after he believed on him when he got up off that crack bench and gave his life to the Lord. If you continue in my word, Garen, You'll know the truth, and the truth is, oh, so I'm, I'm sorry, let me back up. If you continue in my word, Garen, then you'll be my disciple indeed. See, meaning, if I don't continue in the word, then Garen, you're not a disciple. See, somebody say disciple. And you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Will make me free from what, Jesus? Well, Garen... You believe that I was raised from the dead, don't you? Yes, Lord, I believe it. That's, that's what your word says. Romans 10, 9 and 10, I confess you as my Lord. Yeah, great. That got you born again. But, Gary, when you were out there in prison and going from jail to jail and house to house and crack houses and whorehouses and all through the street and crime, you picked up a lot of stuff. Your mind's still jacked up. You still got things your body wants to do because you trained it that way. 
You have a lifestyle out there that you devastated. Your credit jacked up. You're broke. You don't have anything. And so I need to listen, instruct you, and get you out of that mess so that you'll be free. Now, in order for me to be able to do that, Garen, I need you to continue in my word. You'll come to a place where you'll know the truth about finances. You'll know the truth about how to discipline this body. You'll know the truth of how I feel about good and evil. See? And that truth itself will make you free. Free from crack cocaine. Free from recidivism going in and out of jail. Free from the crack house, the whore house, and the jail house. Free indeed. But you're going to have to continue in my word and be a disciple if I'm going to get you there. Is that a good enough translation for you? And that's what I did. And that's how I got in the position that I am in today through discipleship. Now, let me define what is discipleship? What is discipleship? Well, the word discipleship, let's deal with the word disciple, comes from the Greek word meaning, write this down. A student, a pupil, a learner, someone who is under the instruction of another. Did you get that? It also means an apprentice to a master craftsman. I like that one. It makes sense to me. An apprentice to a master craftsman. In other words, you're talking about a man or a woman that will put himself or, un or herself under instruction, who recognizes the need to learn, who recognizes that person knows more than I have, and I know he has what I have, she can do what I can do, she's very talented, um, that's the way I want to be, I want to get free like that, I want ministry like that, I want to do that. Okay, so I need to get under her instruction and let her teach me since she already knows. She, she's a master craftsman. He's skilled in leadership and pastoral uh, ministry. Obviously, she's ministered, uh, anointed. And so I'm going to get under that anointing and I'm going to allow myself to be taught. And I'm going to take those principles, those concepts, and that instruction, and I'm going to implement it. I'm going to apply it to my life until I get the same results that she gets. Till I get the same results that he gets. Till I get the same results as my instructor. I'm a student. I'm a learner, I'm a pupil, I'm an apprentice. I am a disciple. Did you get that? Now, when you add the word disciple to the, excuse me, the word, the, the, the suffix ship, S-H-I-P, to the word disciple, you get discipleship. We're not talking about a boat or a vessel. It has nothing to do with that. No, we're talking about someone who stayed under, and I got this right out of the Greek, someone who stays under a particular teaching long enough so that they're just as skilled as their instructor. Did you get that? I become a scholar. Glory to God. I'm no longer in elementary school. I'm no longer in middle school. I'm no longer in high school. No. I'm, at a, I'm, on, I'm going to a higher level of learning and education in the spirit. See? I stayed under this teaching long enough that now I can do it. Glory to God. The student driver learns to drive like his teacher, right? The student skier learns to ski like his or her instructor, does he not? When a student goes to college and, and then you have a professor teaching you psychology, when you're done, you should be able to teach psychology like she does, should you not? I mean, you are Artie's disciple. Are you getting this? Let me show you. Uh, you you're in the Gospel of Luke. Go to Gospel of Luke chapter 6. We have a few minutes. Look at verse 40. Now remember, we're talking about discipleship being the key to uh, developing a kingdom mindset. This is the key. I know because they got me free. I told you, no one laid hands on me. Nobody cast out no devils. Nobody anointed with oil. And I came to church with a myriad of issues with a plethora of problems. I was pretty jacked up, like a mirror that had fallen off the wall. My life was shattered. Glory to God. And, and, so, and when you see a broken mirror across the ground, it takes a miracle to put that thing back together. Most people would just sweep it up, throw it away, and get another one. Not God. 
He will take your broken pieces and make a masterpiece. Somebody shout glory. Oh, yes, he will. But you're going to have to put yourself under tutorage. You're going to have to put yourself under anointed instruction. You're going to have to become a student. You're going to have to become a learner. You're going to have to become a uh, apprentice and learn of me, the Bible says. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. That's who I was. I was, I was heavy laden. I was burdened down. In drug addiction, burdened down. In perversion, in sexual addiction, burdened down. The enemy had a yoke about my neck until I came into the knowledge of the Son of God. And Jesus said, now learn. He didn't just say, come unto me. He said, learn of me. See, it's not enough just to come to Jesus, folks. We say that all the time, come to Jesus. Yeah, that's great. That'll get you born again. But we're talking about being made free indeed. That's what we're talking about. We want to be free indeed. Not just say, I want my finances fixed. I want my body fixed. I want my relationships fixed. I want to recover all. Glory to God. And to do that, you have to become a disciple. Are you getting this today? Powerful, powerful thing. And so, let me read this verse to you. Verse 40. The disciple, somebody say disciple. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. That was my point. I'm going to read that from the Christian Standard Bible version. I want to wrote this out because it's so powerful. A disciple, somebody say disciple, is not above his teacher, but everyone who is, here we go, fully trained. See what I was talking about? Remember my definition of discipleship when I said you stay under a particular teaching long enough till you become skilled at it? That's biblical, see? Fully trained. He'll be just like his teacher. That's what I'm talking about. I want to be just like Jesus. When everybody else around you is failing, disciples ought to make it. We ought to thrive in the things of God and in the things of the kingdom. Praise God. Would you say this very simple prayer with me? Say, God, I believe this gospel that was preached today, the good news of your kingdom, how your son Jesus bore my sin in his own body on the cross, how he bore my sickness and my disease and my poverty and my shame, how he died with burial, and on the third day you raised him from the dead. And I confess, Jesus is my Lord. I want you to do a couple of things for me. One, I want to make sure you get yourself a Bible. Go down to my website, drgarengatlin.org. Make sure that you write me. Let me know if you need a Bible. Let me know how this message has been, has been a blessing to you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'll be back again next week for another life-changing word from God. Until then, you remember, Jesus is Lord.